hand over to Jim for um, technology enhanced learning to the public body student engagement assessment and feedback. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much. Join the, my presentation. So, and you see the title. So this title quite cover quite a number of things. A uh, cover and uh, pedagogy cover and free, uh, in student engagement and also cover <clears throat> the assessment feedback as well. So uh, before my presentation, I just want to check and some of you uh, how many of you frequently use the chat GPT? So can you raise your hand? Great, thank you very much. So um, you see the talk basically cover uh, three uh, aspects and I quickly go through the first part, the pedagogical part, and then we look at our experience. I really want to share and you and with our experience regarding the how we catch the students' the engagement, how to, uh, what kind of measurement we used and use that measurement to measure so-called student engagement. And uh, after that, I really, I want to use one example and uh, from chat GPT, how st from student experience perspective, how they use chat, chat GTP to complete their coursework, their assignment, okay. So um, I think over past years, so uh, high education have uh, heavily impacted by various challenges. I think the pandemic is an important part. So, and the uh, government policy also is very important. So we can see the, there are many strikes and we are not happy our current the environment. So we try to improve it, okay. And also, the the key factors so driving factors come from emerging technologies so um they lead us to um change a lot of things change a lot of things and also there are big block of research work on the digital for example digital and um, pedagogy people talk about the digital and the curatorial design even talk about digital universities so, and uh, these kind of things actually bring a lot of changes to our university, to the teaching learning environment. And now the key question here is how we are able to measure the student engagement. So, and uh, can we have some good indicator to measure student engagement because students can go to physical class. Okay, that's the traditional way we measure student engagement, but I when we put a lot of things online. So, and a lot of students go to, for example, Blackboard and the virtual learning environment. So they can open the, the web page and then leave the page open and do something else. And a few hours later, come back and continue to do something. So what a way we can use to measure so-called student engagement. So that's a really challenging topic for us as well. So new challenge here is uh, generative artificial intelligence and chat GPT. So this is really challenging us from the assessment perspective, from learning uh, experience perspectives. So uh, last year we organized one workshop. The title just enhanced uh, technology enhanced learning. Learning. So we invited one kind of speaker and from the how University and Neil Gordon. So, and he used um, this is quite a nice diagram to and uh, to summarize some uh, changes for our delivery uh, the model uh, pattern. So, for example, in 2018, 2019, we basically use a traditional way to teach um, students and young in the university environment. And the 2019, 2020, so and because we're facing the, the pandemic, pandemic issues, problems, and we just use the mix and the way to deliver our teaching. Okay, students use the mixed environment to learn and their uh, course. So uh, 2020, 2021, basically we entirely locked down. So we put everything online okay so and from teaching perspective and from learning perspectives everything online and then 
2021 and 2022, uh, so uh, some things uh, gradually come back. So um, I add another two parts. So um, the basically is uh, what a legacy is and from the after pandemic and left from the previous period and uh, what is the challenges at the moment we are facing. So that's basically, so and we call all of these kind of things, if, for example, towards the digital university, that could be the important things we need to think about it. Um, so this is a legacy, and because you uh, some of you so frequently use and the chat GPT, and before and finish this slide, I also talked with the chat GPT and then get some advice. So, but of course, I bring my own the ideas and into this list of the legacies so left after the pandemic. So an important part will be the digital transformation. Okay, this is the key words. And I think this morning, our keynote speaker also in the Q&A sessions and talk about the digital transformation. That's the important part. So I don't want to read the, the whole list of the, the bullet points. And you can see, so from the, uh, the, the important part for us is so, and because we are facing everything online, we have to quickly to learn and adapt, adopt the digital technology. I think that's uh, from student perspective, so from lecture perspective, we have to do so also. And uh, after that, we need to consider, so how we can assess the students, okay? So, and then how we deliver, so, and our course. So all of these kind of things actually remain and also use and for us, in particular from global and international collaboration, collaboration perspective. So I think, so legacy after pandemic, so, and uh, this way basically significantly improve, promote international collaboration from IT, higher education sectors. So um, change already happened. Okay, so now let me give you uh, the, 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 the review. Okay, so call back the, for example, 10 years ago and what we did and how these kind of things and the give us ideas so and let her to move forward to see what we we can use to measure student engagement so 10 years ago we had one workshop and we invited professor Lise Byrne from Durham University gave the keynote talk so and she present the one result, this is basically, and she published this result in 2006. And six years later, and she still holds strong opinion said, so correlation between physical class attendance with their academic outcome, so closely correlated each other, correlated each other. So this is the, um, and the outcome, but we had different openings. So, and some of the participants and these issues. So, um, so they said, so with introducing new technology into the education sector, so, and the physical class attendance and the dropped and the significantly, significantly, and also we raised some and the questions regarding the physical class attendance the regulation from different universities, and by the way, did not draw uh, as a conclusion. Okay, we just leave some suggestions there. We just follow the same line, and then so we study and from research perspective, so we try to understand. So, and what kind of indicators and the measurement for us can be used to measure student engagement? So, and this one that come from the one uh, the author, so and the and the Kuf, so and he published uh, his result. So, and he divided the engagement from the behavior perspective and from emotion perspectives. There are a lot of works around the behavior and the engagement, but 
there are few works are talking about the, the emotion engagement, how we are able to measure emotion engagement, and we can from the attitude from presentism, so and we can so and see. So if we use, for example, attitude as an indicator, how we are able to capture the, the attitude. Okay, so um, we come up with uh, the, our solution use sentiment. So my background is from computer science and particularly on the artificial intelligence and the way I, I did a lot of the machine learning things. So the, we use sentiment that can measure the people opinion, can measure and uh, the, the attitude, but we mainly based on the text. So we have a text, we have a collection of the text document, and then we analyze the collection of the text document. We try to discover the attitude openings and from the people expressions. But now, so where we get this kind of information, so, and also the sentiment analysis actually is very important. The AI tools for us to understand student engagement, the attitude, the emotion as well. So, and uh, here, so, and uh, some things, so for you, particularly from the feedback, okay, so from the, and their attitude to the cost and the program. So, uh, so what we did, and we developed one uh, system, in-house system called the fund system. So this system is able to, so for each, for example, coursework, or examination, we need to give student feedback, meanwhile, give mark. So we generate the feedback sheet for each of the students, and then we label them, we give the name of the file and use their email address. So this system can, is able to release the feedback to student at the same time, at the same time. In order to, uh, because this is a system, has been with us and seven, six years. We collect a large amount of data, large amount of data. So, and we, uh, in order to carry out this study, we finally, we do some processing. We collect the 3,300 feedback uh, student record. And uh, specifically, we look at the three modules, three modules. So I want to give you an idea. So, so for example, once you have a feedback, okay, you upload it into the system. So, and this basically, you can release your feedback to students. So each of the students will receive the hyperlink. As long as a student clicks the hyperlink, and then they can download the feedback sheet. System is able to capture that timestamp. Once it's clicked, and then we receive the timestamp. Okay, so you can see there's a time difference between when we release the feedback to student and when student collect the feedback. Okay, so that is the important part for us. We try to use our sentiment technology to, um, to analyze so-called student attitude. So first, uh, because we concentrate on three modules and we collect their mark, we collect their attendance, and then we project them into two-dimensional representation. We divide this two-dimensional representation into four areas, the uh, quadrants. So you can see, and uh, different areas represent uh, different meanings. So for example, here, and the student field with uh, less attendance, and this part, basically, student attendance. So attends the six percent of class, and also they passed the module. They passed the module. Okay. So this is the, the statistical result, and we also tried a different way to look at the so-called correlation between their physical class attendance and also this with their marks. So we couldn't find out the linear correlation between them. Okay, so this uh, uh, the polynomial so and the relation actually. So and after that, so we have another assessment. So and we look at the so how many days and the the, the past they collect their and the feedback and also we look at their the marks as well. So, and we 
get to this. And we try to understand the correlation between them. And after that, we divide them into the five intervals and based on their, the data of the market collection. And then we think, so this part basically within the 10 days is good. And uh, from 10 days to 15, no risk. And in here, we have a mature, neutral antigen. We have potential risk and we have risk, okay. So we use this one to help us to identify the cohort of students and then use that result to, uh, to create a so-called early invention or different the strategy. That's the first result, okay. So second result, and I want to show you um, the chart GPT. So this is mainly from assessment perspective so, and uh, what is the student experience? What the challenges we are facing? So this is the from, from AI perspective. So the interpretation, what is the, the generative AI basically, and we can use it to, to generate different things, generate the contents. So we can use it to generate the, the source code and the Python code, the Java code. We can use it to generate the image text, but the chat GPT only can generate the text. So, and uh, it can incorporate uh, in a uh, plug in the third party, uh, the functions to generate the image and whatever. So um, this is uh, some technical features. And if you're interested, and uh, so you can, you, can, you can try to learn. So, but the important part here, is so because when we uh, use chat GPT, this is called the prompts engineering. So how we express our questions. If we are able to precisely and express what we are looking for, and then we will get a better result. And if we are not able to precisely to, um, to express what we're looking for, so it's difficult to get the precise result. There's a big difference between search engine and the chat GPT. So for example, when you use the same query, input the chat GPT, from time to time, you can get some little bit of difference. Sometimes the big difference answers, but when you use the search engine, you always get the same answers. Okay, so that's pretty different. So now we look at the whole and what the GPT can do. So, and you are already familiar with, and I just try to go through this one. So, and we can use, for example, and we can use the, some word Chinese, okay, express your idea, and then we use English to and send the, this prompt to the chat GPT, ask the, what this exactly mean? So, and then, so we can get the answer. So this first part is, this is the, the prompt, this is the response I received, okay. And then based on what I received, I can, ask the chat GPT, write an essay, write a story for me. And with, for example, 400, please help write the 400 word story based on the following descriptions. And then we get this one. Meanwhile, and we also input, we can get the Chinese story as well. So why I want to show this, basically currently, so, and we have international collaboration education program. So we have Chinese students, we have English students. So we basically use the same questions to assess students. So, and they can basically use the way, a Chinese way eventually to get the answers in English. So this is one module and this is for postgraduate. And this is a standard module. So and the 11, seven and the Friday is 20. So we expect, okay, students, so we have contact hours, six hours, and then we want a student to use 140 hours for independent study. Okay, so put it together is 200. So we have two assessments. So in past years, we have two assessments, both fully 100% uh, the coursework. And also, so that's the learning outcome, two important part for the learning outcome. One is the module, try to develop a student with independent, independent 
uh, divine uh, problem solving skills. This is one, and the second is the critical thinking. This is another important aspect. So we use the two pieces of the work and then we expect the student and for each of them, put no, for two course work, they spend should about the 30, 40, and 50 hours to complete the assessment. So uh, now, so we release this one. So this is requirement. And what is the student experience? I think that perhaps you want to know. So uh, in July, I invited two um, students. One is enrolled this year, and another student enrolled the last year. Last year. So both students study my module, deep learning, deep learning. So both of them have experience of using chart GPT, use chart GPT. So, and I ask them to help me to complete this assignment, this, this coursework. So, and both of them tell me they only spend less than two hours to complete. We expect the student to spend the 40, 50 hours to complete. They need to put this amount of time for the effort, but eventually we only get the two hours. So, and uh, they also have opinion. They said, if let the, some students who don't have the appropriate good experience play GPT, chart GPT, they perhaps just pick and um, spend a few hours. So, and when we start to mark their result, so what mark I can give them? So I can give them 55 until 60%. So they not only pass the module, also they can get the two one. They can get the two one. So what is the challenge to us? So that's the challenge. So and the way when we develop the module specification, we have two aims. One is the, the problem solving skills. We try to develop students. Also, we try to develop the critical thinking. But when students use the chat GPT, so we are not able to achieve that. So um, this is some prompts the students use, okay? So you can see um, this is a, the question uh, to uh, students, from students, and then, then the answer generated, generated, okay? Students just directly use the requirement of the coursework as the prompt and the input into the chat GPT. So then they get the answers. So they get the answers, okay. And also they can ask ChatGPT to generate the code for them. Mm -hmm. So they can play this code with less effort and then make it works as well, make it work as well. So um, the, we see the ChatGPT bring opportunities to us, okay. So from language perspectives from the writing perspectives, okay, they can help us. For example, I'm a foreigner, so I use ChatGPT can help me to learn English. And also sometimes I struggle to complete something and I use ChatGPT can help me to writing. Okay, that's good. And also they can use the ChatGPT for example, do some preparation, coursework examination. Okay, so and also, so and that is uh, what you, during, so and uh, whatever time they want to use, and then they can use, they can use. Okay, that's the advantage. Of course, there are other advantages as well. So uh, the, there are a lot of challenges and it bring to us. So, and uh, so for example, we are not able to use currently, given current situation, we are not able to achieve the objectives we previously we designed in module specification, develop student independent problem solving skills and the critical thinking, okay? So, and also it brings the plagiarism and if they don't have appropriate acknowledgement, so that will bring the, um, the, some of the plagiarism as well. So, and uh, they are, so for example, also promote the laser. So students sometimes don't actually proactively to work they just rely on GPT, rely on this technology. And also there's the, the concerns related to the ethic issues. And because when chat GPT basically collects the data over the internet, some on the copyright already there, 
So if they don't have appropriate the, the acknowledgement, so that's a trigger another important part. So um, that is uh, something I want to talk. So um, the come up this, the the summary of my presentation. So as a lecture, so and the given current the rapidly uh, rapid development advancement of the AI, in particular chat GPT. So we are facing a lot of problems. That's one. Also, we have legacies and from after the pandemic. So we some uh, things and the students already get used. So they like to use that way to continue their uh, the coursework and their study. So um, we need to consider a prepared approach to move away from the traditional teaching style to the current, the technology enhanced as a flexible learning environment. But can we, so I move away and uh, for example, the new ways from the, for example, on the in-person examination given current GTP can, uh, can do, can do. So this end of my presentation, thank you very much. Do you think there is a risk that we will have international students coming into the UK barely knowing English and just getting a degree because they use generic AI? Yes, I think so. I think so. <laughs> yes. The question for people at home so they can hear you what the question was. Can you just repeat what the question was? So, just so it was the question was about the risk of international students getting degrees without. Okay, so I think that. International student, because so, um, but for, of course, for international student, for joint the program, for example, and the student, they have the language requirement. Okay, they have to pass IELTS, the six. Even they pass the IELTS six, they still has, they still have the, the big difficulties to complete, for example, assignment. So like this kind of coursework. So um, some of them, the heavily use the different tools. They use uh, Google, for example, try to search answers. And also because there are a lot of the open sources available. So, and for example, source code, so they can uh, use Google engine, Google and the search source code and then adapt the source code to complete their task. Okay, that's the one. But now, so chat GPT not only provides the source code, also can provide the English writing. I think that is a really, really is a challenging for, for us, yeah. So uh, which slides you, you prefer? Okay. So this is a sentiment analysis. Um, so frankly, we 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 did not verify. So what actually they are thinking? Because you see, when we have a large number of data is really difficult for her to trace back. So, and this basically, and really come from data we have. So, and based on the data we have, and based on our understanding, based on our research, so, and this is what we draw. So, and we just use that way. For example, regarding the early invention. So, uh, if a student, so for example, if a student around the, this time, the, around the one month later, they still have not collect their feedback and then we process them. So, and this is around the less than 20%, around the 20% students. So, and we process them. So, and definitely, so they, yes, this, uh, they uh, express they were, um, 
whatever region they did not click, collect the, the feedback. So, and they always see some good words and they will make effort to, to do their study, but uh, never knows, difficult. Okay. <laughs>